<clears throat> let some people get on here first. This is my uh, very first one live, so we'll see if I know what I'm doing. So far, so good. I got a lot of things written down, so I'm sure that uh, a lot of the fans will uh, <clears throat> give me their input. I have uh, I have my uh, phone on this kind of like little camera system thing, but I also have my uh, desktop set up right behind. So if you see me glancing off, I'm probably reading comments on the bigger screen just because the uh, screen on my phone is just tiny letters or tiny words. And, and if you got any questions to ask before anyone starts asking, uh, hey, everybody, just making sure that works. Hey, Patsy. Hey, Ryan. Hey, Rick. Hey, Brian. Hey, Bonnie. Well, at least we know the uh, comments work. Um, before anybody starts asking any questions, um, what I would like for y'all to do is when you do ask a question, be sure to tell me like where you're from. Uh, I'll read that off just so people, some of the followers uh, can uh, can understand where everybody's uh, coming from, from around the United States or uh, around the world. Um, I have a lot of things written down on my notepad here. Um, let's see, let me make sure I got this set up correct. So I need to share this to my Jason Roy public figure page. Let me see here. Like I said, I'm still trying to work out the kinks to all this kind of stuff. I, <clears throat> you would think that I'm a social media guru, but guess what? I'm not. I, I don't know. I don't know much when it comes to uh, all of this stuff. It should be showing up. There we go. Okay. I'm going to share this live feed to... My Jason Roy page will it let me do that. Share to share to a page. Okay, let's see. Share to Jason Roy public figure page. Live video starts now. At least I know how to do that. Okay, share. And hopefully it went to the right place. Just going to let a little more people get on here first. I know that uh, I said 7 o'clock. It's now 7.10. I know a lot of people uh, may have forgotten or are or, or, or tuning in late. So let's just see here. Fix this. All right, all right. All right. Um Let's talk about scammers and fake pages. I mean, my God. Um, you know, the closer that we get to the holidays, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, these scammer pages and uh, fake pages just take off. I'm sure that a lot of y'all follow uh, big time celebrities on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and you see, like, for instance, uh, I follow uh, Mark Wahlberg on uh, Instagram. And he'll post a video of something like uh, one of the uh, the uh, sponsorships that he does for like a car dealership or some of the apparel that he promotes. And then right in the comments, you'll see Mark Wahlberger, real. And M Wahlberg won't even uh, be spelled right. Or it'll say Wahlberger or uh, the Wahlbergs or something like that. I mean, it, it is... And then people will sit there and go, hey, Mark, you're talking to us in the comments. And it's not really Mark Wahlberg talking to you. It's a scammer page. You know, I'm sure people like The Rock, uh, Mark Wahlberg, uh, a lot of famous actors, they don't care if if there's fake pages coming out just because, I mean, they got more important stuff to deal with. Um, for instance, I was, uh, I was watching The Rock's video and the rock goes, hey, if uh, if you tune into my video tonight, you'll win some of the tequila that he is uh, promoting that he owns. And as soon as that video started going, there were fake uh, pages saying, hey, you've won, you know, contact contact me here. And there were people like, oh man, we won, we won, and they were all being driven to this fake page. And I can only imagine uh, what these uh, scammers did uh, on the rocks page. So. You know, if they're doing it to these big time celebrity actors, imagine what they're doing to smaller pages like mine or, you know, any uh, comedian's page or any uh, news organization's page. 
uh, any politicians page. There are fake pages out the ass out there. And it's frustrating to me. You know, um, I have a, I have a reputation to uh, protect. Pop, I, I got to protect all of them because when it comes down to it, I am the barrier between them and getting harmed from, you know, people in the real world. And people in the real world are absolutely nuts. So let's start off with my first uh, talking point are the the giveaways that we do. Um, matter of fact, I got to announce the winner tonight, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the giveaways that we do, uh, you know, once every few weeks or, you know, we'll, we'll do a few of them uh, each week. The the giveaways that we do only come from Pop Watch. Uh, I do have a Jason Roy public figure page that sometimes I'll share the uh, contest on there, but the Jason Roy public figure page, which has like 600,000 followers almost and like 250,000 likes, I don't give away anything from that page. I only strictly give away uh, stuff from the Pop Watch page only. And if you notice that Pop Watch page has the verified blue check mark. So if someone's contacting you from a different Pop Watch page that does not have that uh, blue verification uh, check, you're probably getting scammed. Don't respond to them. Don't give them any personal information. Don't even engage in conversation because these people are really good at what they do. You know, they, they traffic the entire globe on social media and they just, you know, scam and con people uh, out of their money and out of their um, personal information. Uh, but these giveaways that, that we do, they only come from Pop Watch. Uh, the Boudreaux's Wood Shop, um, the Boudreaux's Wood I hear my cat trying to get in. I put like three heavy books at the door so she couldn't push it open. Uh, the Boudreaux's Wood Shop cutting board giveaway, that is real. That has come from this page. Um, once we announce the winner, I will contact the winner normally from my own personal uh, Facebook page. I uh, Just like anyone else, uh, when I first started Facebook back like in 2006 or 7 or 8 or whatever it was, I created just a normal Facebook page like we all have. Then, um, what was it, three or four years ago, I started the Pop Watch page. I had to use my personal page to start the Pop Watch page. Then I started my public figure page. Uh, then I started my uh, work, my professional work page, which is TA Sports. Uh, it's like TA Sports Jason Roy or something like that. I'm not on there all the time, but I'll share videos there. Um, those, uh, those, those pages are mine. I own them. So the... There's a lot of people out there that are getting uh, messages from, you know, Pop Watch Real or Pop Watch Prize or the Real Pop Watch Winner, Pop Watch Giveaways. There are hundreds of these fake pages out there, and I, you know, I, and I can't, I can't tell people enough to to not get fooled by them and and all that kind of stuff, but. Uh, the giveaways, anytime I do a giveaway from Boudreaux's uh, Woodshop or uh, Tuscaloosa uh, Vinyls and Crafts, sometimes they'll make some of the products that we have out there. Our small business uh, initiative, they will keep all the profits from those. So if you don't hear it from Pop Watch, this verified Pop Watch page, and I'm speaking on to everyone out there, it's not a real page. Uh, the two pages that you can trust, and let's get into verification. Pop Watch page is verified. I have a public figure page called Jason Roy. It's all caps, all capital letters, Jason space Roy, R-O-Y. Everything is capitalized. Uh, that is my public figure page. Anything posted on there, it's coming from my fingertips. If I make a video, it's, you know, it's coming from me, who you see right now. Uh, sometimes there's fake pages out there that will download my video off the Jason Roy page, because you can do that with any video on Facebook. You, there's a, it's called like fbdown.net. You can download any video on Facebook and use it as your own if you wanted to. Uh, use it as your own and not give it anyone credit. So there are people out there that will create a fake Jason Roy page and they will download my videos and use them as their own. So your question might be, well, how do we know that the fake page that we're talking to is not the real page? I mean, common sense will tell you if there are registries like in, you know, 
foreign countries, then it's not me. If they have a hundred followers, it's not me. If they have a thousand followers, it's not me. Take a look at their friends list. Look, look, look who, look where these people are from. Uh, they're probably not from Texas, Florida, California, New York. They're not, they're definitely not from the United States. So, uh, take that into consideration when people send you information that might be too good to be true. Um, now the verification, a lot of people will follow my public figure page, Jason Roy, all caps. Why am I not verified on there? I don't know. Facebook won't verify that page for God knows what reason. They say that I need more credentials. They say just because I'm part of Pop Watch, I'm not Pop. So they're asking for like uh, newspaper articles. Do I have a website? Anything like that? I don't have anything that that is pertaining to me. The reason why I created that public figure page is because I wanted to keep my personal life separate from the pop watch page. So I was like, if anybody wants to know about me, they can go to that specific page and they can learn all about me. Uh, I always have to answer personal questions on pop watch. That is for our family. Of course, myself, my dad, Connor, my sister, other outside people are involved with the page that are on there. Uh, but we try to keep that strictly geared towards Nana pop. And of course myself, cause I'm on there, but I created the Jason Roy all caps page. Uh, when I say all caps, all capitalized letters. So don't be looking for a Jason Roy all caps page. Uh, I use that page to post all my personal stuff. What goes on behind the scenes of pop watch, what goes on in my life. So, uh, the pop watch page, that's number one. My, my public figure page is number two. So we go back to Facebook, not verifying my public figure page. Well, you know, I have a Facebook representative. Yes, Facebook has real people that you can talk to. I mean, you, you would think that there's not a single person that works for Facebook because I know how, you know, even when I was just a normal media person on Facebook, uh, I couldn't get in touch with anybody. It was all like, um, you know, like a robot's talking to you. You'll say, we will look into this, Steve. We will look into this, Amanda. We will look into this, April. And it was always the same generic answer that they would give you. Well, I actually have a representative that I speak to. She's out in uh, San Francisco, California. Um, so I asked her, I said, why can't I get my page verified? And she says, well, you know, you just need more accolades, more credentials. I said, okay, no problem. So let's go back to my normal page, which is just Jason Roy. The first one that I started when, you know, it, I, it was like 2008 or 2009. 2007, whatever it was. Um, I actually got that one verified. Ask me how, I don't know. I spoke to my representative and I said, why is my normal page verified? You know, the normal page, you can only have 5,000 followers. 5,000 followers, or I'm sorry, 5,000 friends, but you can have as many followers as you want, but you can have only up to 5,000 friends that you can accept, but you can have as many followers as, as you want. So that page is verified. So I asked her, I said, why did that page get verified and not my public figure page, which exponentially has way more people and uh, way more content? She goes, well, it might have been a mistake. So just go ahead and keep that one verified. I said, okay, what about getting my other one verified that I've been trying to get verified for a few years? She said, in time, it'll get verified. So um, don't be alarmed. Oops, camera's moving. Don't be alarmed. If you follow my public figure page, Look at the following. Look how many people follow it. 250,000 likes, almost 600,000 followers. That's a real page. That's not a scammer page. I'll post a picture on there and people are like, this is not verified. This is not the real Jason Roy. I can post a video of me going live on there and people will still not think that it's me. What can you do? Common sense, you know, if you, if, if you pick up what I'm putting down, you'll understand. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's go to the comments real quick and see if anybody has any questions. This is my first time. Like I said, I, I, I'm used to doing videos, so I'm kind of nervous being on camera live. Uh, I'm definitely not used to this at all. Let's go to some questions uh, from our fans. Make sure you put where you're from uh, when you ask the question so I can uh, give wherever you're from a little clout. If it's a small town, you never know. Hey, Patricia Long from Maryland. Let's see. 
Anybody got any questions? I appreciate all the... Let's see... And I'm sure all the fake, all, all the fake pages, all the scammers are watching this too. Going, hmm, let's see what I can do from this. I'm going to take all of his information and I'm going to use what he's telling all of his fans to bamboozle some of his fans. So, Jason, are you happy for with the Cowboys this year? Yes, I'm happy with the Cowboys this year. What has it been like? 95, 96 since we've been to the Super Bowl. It's been a it's been tough being a Dallas Cowboys fan. I mean, my son's like, well, how long has it been since they've been in the Super Bowl? I'm like, dude, I was a little older than you. I was probably, what, 10 or 11 when, the la when they last went and won. So hopefully we can get back this year. Shout out to Jason from Louisiana. L wait, Louisa, Kentucky. Let's see. I got to figure out. Can I touch my screen? Okay, I can go back and read this. Sorry. I am a newbie when it comes to this. I don't know what I'm doing, hardly. Michael Pelka, what's up, Jason? How are you and Pop from Michigan? We're doing great. I got a video coming later. Uh, I went ahead and downloaded it, so I'll be posting it uh, after this video along with the winner of the Boudreaux's cutting board. What do I do? Okay, that's how I go back down. I appreciate it, everybody. Let's see, what is that? Robert Epps from Dalton, Georgia. What time does Pop go to bed and get up? Pop goes to bed usually around 8, 30, 9, and we let him sleep. He usually sleeps till 10, 11, 12 o'clock. There's been times where he slept till 1, so when Pop needs his rest, he's going to get his rest. Plus, with this physical therapy that he, that he got, today wore his ass out. So uh, when I picked him up today, I mean, he looked like he was beat with a uh, – with a uh, pillowcase full of batteries. I mean, he was just, oh, so I was like, get in my car. We got to go get you a haircut, buddy. Let's see. Can you have $236? No. Let's see. Oh, man, there's so many comments. I'm trying to read them so quickly. Uh, maybe a... I'm trying to keep up with it on both screens. This is tough. But I, I'm glad that we're being able to engage like this. This is this is fun, but the comments are going way, 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 way too fast. What does your dad think about the firing of Coach O? Kevin from Kevin from Louisiana. Did Coach O get fired or was he gonna finish out the year at LSU? I can't remember. Either way, my dad was upset. I know the whole the SEC network was talking to uh, talking about it, but my dad was upset. He's now saying, "Well, you know, LSU's, you know, they're not any better than Texas. Just firing good coaches." Does it bother Nan that Pop wants to look at booties? No, they've been together for what sixty six years. You know, Pop knows Pop knows where he lies. So, uh, and Nan knows where he lies. Yeah. It, you got to have a little levity and humor. You know, Nan's always given Pop uh, a long enough leash, but at the end of the day, you know, Pop is, Pop will talk the talk, but he won't walk the walk. You know, he he's a funny guy. He, that's just what he enjoys doing. Um, my whole life he's been doing that. And Nan, and Nan always cracks jokes on him too. Uh, Y'all just never see that. Uh, but Nan really gets, you know, she puts the work into Pop sometimes when, uh, when she gets riled up, but it, it, it's equally as funny. Let's see. Coach O likes to look at them booties. Apparently, that's what he was getting in trouble for at LSU. Um, Jason, you're a great guy. Thank you. You know, no, I, the best person to get on here would be Nan. Uh, she can engage with, uh, she would love to engage with everybody. I'm probably going to set that up at some, at some point, uh, to let her engage with her fans on, um, her laptop pop. That ain't going to happen. You know, I, I always, I always tell people this is a, this is a, a cancel culture world. I'm like, all pop's got to do is say one wrong thing. And you know, the whole world, you know, just implodes. So no pop won't be on here.
Will you ever start a Nan watch? You know, I, I honestly thought about doing that. I'm willing to bet that her page would be bigger than Pops. Uh, Nan is, a, to be honest, Nan's a little more interesting than Pop. You know, Pop is Pop. Pop's the same every day. Nan, um, Nan, as far as like culturally, uh, her intelligence, it's, you know, she, she is just a different person from Pop. So if I started a Nan watch, I, I definitely think that it would be bigger than Pop Watch. And I may have to do that, but then I'm going to have to battle with more people doing scam pages. So I don't, I don't know if I necessarily want to do that. But if I do, uh, I might just change Pop Watch to Nan Watch or I'll just, uh, do another one. But for right now, I'm just going to keep Pop Watch. What is the deal with TikTok? Okay, well, I posted today that we had a million followers. Is it a million followers or a million likes? Okay, it's a million likes on TikTok. Uh, there's fake pop watch TikToks out there. It is what it is. So people would take our content off of Facebook, save it as their own, and then upload it to TikTok. And they were making money off it. They were making money basically off our videos without giving us credit. But they were... Uh, you know, going about their everyday business as if they were pop because people would ask them questions, say, pop, how's Nan? Oh, she's great. I mean, we, we can't, you can't do that because that's when you start getting into the dark underworld of are these people taking advantage of vulnerable people out there, um, saying that they are who they're not. So I had to get on there and t I, honestly, I don't even enjoy TikTok. Uh, they do have good music on there. I mean, it, it if they actually had a TikTok Music Awards, I'd probably watch that just because there's a lot of cool indie, you know, rock and country and stuff like that. Really good songs from uh, small artists that you can hear on there. Um, but the TikTok page, we just reached uh, a million likes. I started it back January, I think it was in February. So to get a million likes in, you know, eight, nine months, that's, that's pretty good. And I think we have like, I think it's a six million followers or something like that. I don't know, but I think our views are up somewhere around, uh, I think it's up somewhere around, you know, 50 or 60 or 70 million. I don't know how all those analytics work when it comes to TikTok. I have some friends that try to teach me about it, but that's just over my head. But you can go to that page. We're not verified. TikTok's like anything else. You can get it verified. Uh, I haven't done enough content on there. I, we don't have enough clout on there to get verified by TikTok, but the thing about TikTok, they actually have people that work for them that if they enjoy a page or if they like your content, they can verify you. So there's pages out there that have, you know, 100 million uh, followers, but they may not have a blue verified uh, check mark just because the people at TikTok may not enjoy their content. So that's the reason why it's verified. Yeah, some people get verified for a lot less and terrible content. Yes, Pop is doing much better. I mean, we were fortunate to get him out of the uh, hospital. Um, I remember when I was doing the update videos, I was given best case scenario. You know, I was trying to have, you know, ice flowing through my veins, ice water flowing through my veins on that. Um, you know, the, the medical staff, they did a great job. I mean, there's, there's, there's not enough that we can say about them, but in the end, we had to get Pop out of the hospital. Um, the two and a half, the two to two and a half weeks that he was sidelined was, was, was bad. Um, I would honestly say if he had to stay another week or two in there, he may not have made it out. It is what it is. That, that, that was our scenario. That was our scenario. And so we had to draw a line in the sand and say, you know, do we want to get him out quicker and maybe a little underweight so we can get him home to then nourish him back to health. So that's what we did. And, uh, you know, he did the, the test. He passed all the tests to get out. Now, he could have stayed in there a little bit longer. The doctors probably wish he would have stayed there a little longer just so they can monitor him. But his mental and physical health was, sh you know, it was sharply declining. So we had to get him out. And I was I was glad that I got to go up there and speak to him because uh, I got to uh, – I got to have a heart-to-heart -heart with him and say, dude, we got to get you out of here. And, you know, the, one of the main issues was he didn't like the food. So uh, with the, the the liquid diet that he was on, um, he just didn't enjoy it. So, you know, liquid diets, you're not going to gain any weight from that anyway. It's just going to go straight through you. So he didn't enjoy it. So imagine being in the hospital, not enjoying the liquid diet, you're going to lose weight. Imagine just not eating anything. 
he's going to lose weight. He was drinking water. He was drinking, I think, uh, some uh, Cokes that had a little bit of acidity so it could help clear out his esophagus. But other than that, he wasn't eating. So we went up there and uh, we improvised a little bit and uh, we got him back on track and we basically gave, you know, him an ultimatum say, dude, you got to eat this or you're not coming home. And of course, you know, Pop Stubborn's like, well, I, I may, may, I'd rather just stay here. No, no, you don't. He's just being stubborn. So, you know, we were, you know, unfortunately, we were just kind of sitting there force feeding him to make sure that he can get these tests done. And once, uh, once there was enough food in his system, once he had a little bit of nutrition built up to where the doctors can perform the uh, diagnosis, diagnostics and tests, he was fine. We were able to get him home. But, you know, you saw that picture when I was sitting right next to him in his hospital bed. He looked like absolute shit. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I walked in that hospital for the first time and saw him. I was like, my goodness. You know, I mean, he looked, I mean, he, he almost looked like the Crypt Keeper. Tells from the Crypt. I was like, dude, this is, this, we, now th this is not going to fly. So I told everybody to get out of the hospital room and the nurses, the orderlies, my grandmother, my dad, I said, Pop, we got to have a talk. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say that we didn't both shed some tears when we spoke to each other. I know I did. But, hell, you know, he's, he's, the, only, he's the only grandfather I got left. He's the, you know, only great-grandfather that Connor has. So I, you know, through, through my will, I was, I was going to pull him out of that hospital uh, come uh, hell or high water. High, hell or high water. I wasn't going to let him go through that. I would almost, I would almost rather be the bad guy and have people say, well, you shouldn't have got him out. I would rather be looked at as the bad guy that got him out and got him healthy than the empathetic, the caring one who left him in the hospital and say, well, you know, maybe there'll be a miracle. No, not me. I'm going to do what I got to do for my family. That goes for anybody. So uh, anybody in my family, if I got to do something for them, even if it's unconventional, I'm going to do. I, and I'm pretty sure everybody out there would do the same for their loved ones. So uh, we're glad to have him home and his weight. He's gained five or six pounds in the last, what, two or three weeks. So everything's looking up. You know, he has minor setbacks here and here and then. Uh, you know, he, he threw up a couple of times last week, but that's going to happen in the uh, recuperation process. So he's doing a lot better um, he's a lot more active. You can even see in the videos to where he's popping up, sitting down. His his quick-witted humor is there. Uh, so I think he's going to do pretty good. We just got to get through the winter time. Winter time is usually when he likes to pack on pounds. So once we can get through the cold season and get that belly pooching out a little more, as he would say that myself and my dad has, he'll be a, he'll be a lot different pop. You know, you'll you'll see the jowls, you'll see that face uh, start to fatten up a little bit. Uh, that's when Pop's at his best. But right now, um, you know, we got to we gotta take what's on our plate and run with it. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to... Let's go back to scammer stories. Who wants to hear some good scammer stories? My God, I feel like if Dr. Phil was sitting right here beside me, we, we would have a billion views on this video. Dr. Phil, get me on your show. Let's talk about these scammers. Okay or catfish, or whatever you call them. Let me give you some scammer stories. Uh, of course, everybody knows that my sister, she works for uh, CBS 19 East Texas out of Tyler. And she gets contacted all the time from these folks that are saying they were bamboozled, that uh, this fake page stole money, that they sent them items, and, and they were never you know reciprocated back, and stuff like that. So let me start off with the story that I heard today, since this one's fresh. There was a lady who, and I'm taking all these with a grain of salt. I mean, I, I sometimes I'll get contacted on my uh, Instagram page or my personal Facebook page, and I'll just read these stories and go, my God, the world's crazy. So uh, the story that I heard today, a lady uh, sent me an, um, um, an email, a uh, Facebook message, and she asked what I was doing hiding behind the Jason Roy page. Apparently, she looked at my page, and she doesn't think that that's the real me. Okay. So I said, ma'am, what makes you believe that this is not the real me? <laughs> she told me, this lady's from Missouri. I don't, I don't remember what city in Missouri, but Missouri. Uh, she said that she was contacted by me 
I live in East Texas, Longview, Texas. Uh, she said that she was contacted by me, who also lived in Missouri. And I met up with this lady at a motel. Had sexual relationship relations with this woman. Carried on a almost year-long relationship. And then she asked why I never wanted to see her again. I, I, it's crazy, I'm telling you. So I asked this lady, I said, okay, look at my pictures. Did he look like me? She goes, no, he looked different. But your pictures are not the real you. <laughs> so I asked her, I said, well, what does this guy look like? What Do you have a picture of? No, I don't have a picture. I just messaged him, uh, or he just messaged me on Facebook with your pictures. Then we met up in a motel, you know, bing, bang, bong. A year later, we're still having communication, but I was curious to why he didn't want to see me again or sleep with me again. What's wrong with these people? So um, this lady was upset with me because she thought that I was the person that she slept with, but now I'm assuming the identity of a different person using my own pictures. Figure that out. And it didn't help when I asked the lady, was it any good? So, uh, anyways, uh, no, that was not me. It was not me. I live in Texas. I've never even been to Missouri. Um, that's just the one that I heard today. Now, my sister contacted me. She just got back from uh, vacation in Maine uh, with her husband. But my sister contacted me earlier this week, and she said some lady was wondering uh, why I didn't respond back to her after she sent me a new iPhone. Hey, I would love a new iPhone. But this lady sent a scam page, a fake page, and it was a pop watch page. And she thought that, and this is a page, you know, this is a page that re friend requested her. I can't friend request from, from pop watch. I can't do any of that. Uh, I can't send you a message. I disabled all that. But this was a pop watch page that sent her his phone number, his address, and this lady sent this guy a brand new iPhone, whatever it's, whatever the number's up to now, a new iPhone to this guy. And then he ghosted her. He never talked to her again. Then she gets mad at me. So this lady is having communications with this pop watch page and she's thinking that it's me talking to her. I asked her, I said, where, where was this address? And she said it was like in Kentucky. I don't live in Kentucky. Never been to Kentucky. I live in Longview, Texas. So I asked her, I said, what makes you think that I'm going to be in Kentucky? And if I wanted a cell phone, I'd just say, hey, send it to me here in Longview, Texas. And she goes, well, maybe you have a house up there. Maybe you have a P.O. box up there. So this lady gave me the address that she sent it to. I Google earthed it. And this was like a questionable free candy van type of a house. I mean, this, I mean, all she had to do was Google earth this. And this lady, I mean, I think she was a nurse. So I know that she's, she's a smart woman. Uh, maybe no common sense, but I figured that she's got to be a smart woman. She's got to know how the real world works. She's got to come in contact with a bunch of these wackadoos in her job. So uh, I asked her to uh, I asked her to to do some more research and get back to me, but she was convinced that I took her phone and she was wondering why, you know, after after I told her I wanted to marry her, that she sent me a cell phone and never talked to her again. Plus, I'm, a, I'm an Android guy. I'm not an iPhone guy. So if you want to send me a phone, it better be an Android. No iPhone. I'm just kidding for the for the ones out there who think I'm being serious. But seriously, send me an Android. Just kidding. So, the stories that I have are unbelievable. I mean, I, I've been apparently I, I've been dating 50 women from the ages of 40 to like 76, and I, and I you know I feel bad. You know I I understand. I understand that there's people out there that will take advantage of people. It's 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 evil. It's cruel. 
But damn, I mean, I'm 37 years old. I'm not saying that I wouldn't take Bo Derek out to eat. I'm not saying that I don't find, you know, older people attractive. Older than me. Let's let's use that. I don't want to get canceled. Older than me that are attractive. But good God, I'm not going to propose to anyone on Facebook. And that's exactly what these scamming pages are doing. The stories are wild. And, you know, even these scamming pages, this lady was like, well, it, 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 it's weird how they, they come to find me. Like, I have Jason Roy, my normal page, just a nobody, just Jason Roy, normal. These people will contact me and say, well, why aren't you talking to me anymore? Who the hell are you? I don't know who this person is. And I'm looking that we don't have any prior history. So I have to accept their, you're 33 waiting on me. Okay. <laughs> uh, I knew the comment section would uh, get a little frisky. Uh, but there are people that will message me and say, well, why don't you speak to me anymore? I'm like, we've never spoken before. I had to accept your your message to for us to be able to communicate. And she goes, no, we've been speaking for the last six months. You know, I've even sent you nude pictures. I was like, oh, my God. No. All this person has to do is go back who they were speaking to. Look at the comments. Look at the, the threads, the contact threads. If you're sending people information, go back to that person. How do you automatically find me and assume that you were speaking to me the entire time? There's no history between us. When you send me a message, it has to be accepted. It'll It, it lets you know that. When you send me a message, my Facebook page, my Facebook messenger said, this must be accepted before I communicate with you. So if I'm not, if I'm not talking to you prior, then you're talking to someone else. But these stories are wild. Sending nude pictures. What's wrong with you? Don't send nude pictures over the internet. My God. Did Anthony Weiner not tell us anything? Bless my heart. I know it. Bless my heart. A lot of desperate women out there. Ah, uh, you know, there's a lot of desperate men too. We don't even know if there are men or women behind these uh, these pages. We don't know. But, you know, in, in, I hate to see people get hurt. I really do. You know, uh, you don't really see the men getting targeted as much as you see elderly women. I mean, that, that's, that's what it is. You know, you... They're getting targeted. I get message upon message about people saying, well, hey, someone said I won this. Uh, how do I get it? Well, who'd you speak to? You didn't speak to me. If you go back to the person who said you won, look at their page. If it says pop watch or it says pop dot underscore eight watch real TV winner, that's not me. Come on. Come on now. I'm not mad at anyone. I'm not mad. You can't upset me. You can't make me mad. There, there, there's nothing that, I mean, I get, there's things in the world that upsets me. Yes, there's, there's bigger things out there than, you know, pop watch scammers and, you know, fake Jason Roy page scammers. I understand that. But goodness gracious. I mean, come on. Common sense goes a long way. And I would like to say, I would like to think that all of our fans, out of all the Facebook pages, in the world, I would like to think that our fans have the most common sense. I think we got the best fans, period. I'll put our fans up against anyone. We got the more well-seasoned fans that have been there, done that, and they don't put up with no BS, so we got the best fans. Can anyone tell I'm nervous, or am I just ranting? Am I just ranting? Uh, no, I, I've, who's that? Wes Lawrence, what's up, buddy, over there in Tyler? Hey, I gotta take Connor over there to the, uh, spook house. What is it called? World, World of Chaos, something like, where, where, where'd you go, buddy? All right. All right, Wes, sorry, man. I'm gonna have to keep going on. Wes Lawrence, everybody. <sighs> let's see. Sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to read some. 
Some questions. Hey, bro. What's up, Wes? Wes, you should be taking care of your wife right now, cleaning the house, cooking her a nice meal. You don't need to be on here watching me. World of Chaos Haunted. I'm going to have to take Connor to that. I took him to Doc Wilkes' uh, spook house. What was it? Saturday? and, and uh, Or was it Friday? Yeah, Friday, and he loved it. He loved it. Oh, yeah. You keep clicking your pen, so yes, I can tell you're nervous. Thank goodness I don't have a fidget spinner. Should have borrowed that one from Connor. She is going to Bruno, so you're not cooking for her tonight. Wes, when do you cook for her? That's what I want to know. I want to see a picture of a nice, juicy ribeye steak. Yes, perverts and cruel people is what they are. Let's see, I have my friend Irma who just sent me a Facebook message. I'm not going to respond to her right now because I'm afraid it's going to mess up this live video. So Irma, you're going to have to wait till after this is over. Am I single? Yes, I am single. I've been single for a long time. Do you enjoy being single? Eh, you know, it, it is what it is. Right now, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm trying to raise my son. That that in itself is is a challenge. Throw a woman into the mix. You know, I I, I don't know if I can balance them right now. I'm sure I will uh, in the not so distant future. But uh, I love taking care of my kid. You know, the thing, Pop, yeah, his, the greatest generation. You know, the thing about Pop, and I'm 37 years old. I'm pretty sure the generation that's, you know, 37, 35 to 50 years old, you know, having grandparents that are now in their 80s and 90s is the greatest thing. You know, the coolest thing you can do is I would ask my grandfather, Pop, you know, when he was a little boy, Pop, did you ever meet anybody who was born in the 1800s? So we're talking about when he was in, you know, in the 1940s, he had family members that were born in the late 1800s. How crazy is that, that you are just a few generations removed from knowing somebody that lived in the 1800s. I, I asked my grandfather, I said, was, you know, tell me a story. He goes, well, there was a guy that used to go to our church, Elmira Chapel, and he said that this guy was born in like the 1870s. Now, this is Pop in the 1940s, so Pop was, you know, maybe a young teenager or 10 or 11 years old, but he said this guy was born in like the 1870s. I'm like, my God, how crazy cool is that? You know, now... We're lucky to find someone who was born in the 20s and the 30s. Pop knew people that were born in the 1800s. Nan knew people that were born in the 1800s that didn't have a pot to piss in. But they worked hard to get where they wanted to be. And now, we are all here because of them. We don't give them enough credit. I think we should give our grandparents a lot of credit. They survived. Greatest generation. Joe Rogan's podcast. Yes, I like Joe Rogan's podcast. I think he's a brilliant man. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I never get into politics, but his view on a lot of things are pretty cool about life in general and everything. I mean, I, I, I no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, I think Joe Rogan's a good podcast. So go check out Joe Rogan. He's pretty cool. My, my granny just passed away last year at the age of 100. Sorry to hear that. 100 years. That's that's a that's a beautiful life. Beautiful life. I'm 37 years old, and I'm looking at my dad. He's, okay, I can't tell you my dad's age because I know if I tell you his age on here, all of his buddies will start ragging on him because I think when my dad goes to the uh, to the bar every once in a while, my dad will say, yeah, it's my birthday. I'm 58 years old. Oh, get Billy a beer. He's 58 years old. He's older than that, but he'll get upset if I uh, tell his real age. But yeah, I'm 37. My dad's whatever age he is. Uh, 
man, that's just a long time. That's a long time to get to his age. And then I'm thinking about Pop. Pop's 88 years old. Nan will be 86 December 18th, I think. 18th or 19th? 18th. Um, 88 years old. That that seems like a lifetime away from me. Uh, I'd, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate. I hope to, to make it to my dad's age. I, that, that will feel like forever to me. But to make it to 88, that's like living another life. We are not convinced this is the real Jason. <laughs> you got jokes. I like it. I like the humor. I like the humor. With the little smiley face at the end. I wouldn't have uh, taken you so serious if there wasn't a smiley face at the end. Did everybody uh, did everybody uh, participate in the uh, cutting board giveaway? I hope so. Boudreaux's Woodshop. Boudreaux's Woodshop, owned by Grady Hollers. Hollers, Hollers. Grady Holler. Grady Hollers. Say that fast ten times. Grady Hollers. Grady Hollers. Grady, eh, tongue twister. Grady Hollers. He owns Boudreaux's Woodshop out of Marlow, Oklahoma. He's been one of our fans from the very beginning. He sent me a cutting board one time, and I loved it. I use it all the time when I cook. So he asked me, he goes, hey, man, would you like a Pop Watch cutting board? I said, sure. So he sent me one, and when I got it, it was the, one of the coolest things I've ever been given. So I said, you know what? We're going to do a Pop Watch giveaway with, cut, with, with these cutting boards. So I told him, I said, I want 10 of them. Send me 10 of them. I'll pay for them. Ten of them. So he got them sent to me, and I and I got them in boxes in my kitchen. But we're going to be giving those away throughout this month and the next month. Uh, but I'll be making that uh, announcement for the winner of the Pop Watch uh, cutting board giveaway that I, what was it, advertised a few days ago. I'll make that announcement tonight. So you got to stay tuned for that. And also the Pop Watch video that I'll post a little later. Boudreaux's Woodshop out of Marlowe, Oklahoma. If you want a Pop watch or nan cutting board go to their website they're they're a verified trusted source uh go uh go to their site and order you one i think the one that i had it was like 11 by 15 95 percent maple five percent walnut 80 dollars shipping domestically i know that we have a lot of fans outside the united states but to ship that one to let's say canada would cost like 50 bucks I just shipped a Pop Watch overseas winner to London, uh, in the United Kingdom, for a hundred and eight dollars. Hundred and eight dollars. But I still got to do a couple more of those uh, overseas giveaways. So it's, I'm pretty sure my tab's going to get a lot higher. But I remember when I went up to the lady at the uh, kiosk at the post office, and I was like, "Yeah." Um, I need to send this to, and I had to fill out the customs forms and all that. And she goes, ooh. And I go, what, what, what's going on? She goes, $108. I go, my God. But $108 is better than me uh, getting on a plane, a plane and hand delivering it there. So $108 is for a good cause. Uh, he was excited. Um, he was excited about it. Actually, it's the guy that, that we posted, uh, made a post about last week. He, uh, he is... Uh, uh, on his uh, sobriety, uh, battling alcoholism, he is uh, sober, and he is he was celebrating his uh, sobriety. So uh, we appreciate him getting through that. But one hundred eight dollars, just kidding. We enjoy it, and it's for a good cause. Oh, also, uh, a lot of these scammer pages they'll ask you for money and personal information. Don't worry, I'll never ask you for money. No, I mean, I'll never ask you for any of your personal information. This lady uh, from a few months back said that she gave her Social Security, she gave her bank routing number to this guy. Come to find out, the police actually contacted me uh, from New Jersey. Uh, the police department asked who I was. I don't know how they got my number. I'm sure that they can find me real easy when it, when it comes to uh, uh, finding suspects. So they contacted me. They got all my information. I said, well, what, what's going on? They said, well, we're not at liberty to tell you. So they said, we're going to investigate if, uh, if there's anything that we need, any pertinent information that you need to know, we'll contact you. Well, they did contact me, and they said that this lady 
was giving out her social security. She gave out her banking and routing information. And this guy ended up stealing like $15,000 from her in New Jersey. She was upset with me here in Texas. You've got to be a total POS to do that to people. You know, the, and the lady, she, she couldn't get the money back. I don't need, I don't know if they found the person or, or what happened, but you know, I wish there was something that I could do to help. Unfortunately, I can't because there's, these stories are all over the place and, and it's just not my page. It's not just pop watcher, the Jason Roy page. There are pages all over Facebook. Uh, Neil McCoy, one of my good friends, he'll post a live video and, or he'll post, uh, you know, maybe giving away concert tickets and a fake Neil McCoy will get in there and start saying, Hey, you want some more tickets? Come here. And then he's got to get on there and, um, uh, you know, copiously explain, explain over and over and over and over and over, um, largely in part because he doesn't want to, uh, ruin his reputation with these people out there scamming. So, you know, I'm sure that once this video posts and you'll be able to read all the comments, I'm sure there's the scammers are going to go to work. Hey, if you enjoyed my video, uh, send me your credit card number. Send me an iPhone. Send me nude pictures. Not me. I'm talking about the scammers. I'm just giving you a just giving you an example. Let's go to the let's go to the comments. How did you keep from that cat getting run over in the street at in front of Pop's house? Cat's loyal. Cat's loyal. He looks both ways before he crosses the road. And he's got nine lives. Well, eight. I saw him almost get dusted by a school bus one time, so I think he's down to eight lives now. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. Somebody give me a good, juicy question. I want a good one. A good one. Give me a good one. I'm constantly getting scammers from Neil McCoy. Not from Neil McCoy, but from his page. The scammers target his page, too. Let's see. Tracy, I saw you, Tracy, with vinyl. Tracy, where'd you go? Tracy, where'd you go? With Tuscaloosa, Tusca, I can't say that word, Tuscaloosa Vinyl and Crafts. Tracy, yes, she's the one who does our uh, Pop Watch uh, Nana Pop Tumblr. So uh, as soon as supplies are back on the shelves, she'll be able to make some more of those tumblers and send them out to our fans. And she's a small business, part of our, you know, give back small business initiative that she'll be able to keep all the profits from those. And I think she did very well past few times that we've done it so we appreciate all the fans helping out a small business in tuscaloosa alabama in my brett musburger voice alabama i can't stand alabama hook em horns i'm not an alabama crimson tide fan pop is but not me billy's not billy's sure not a alabama fan he's a uh, lsu tigers there you are, Tracy Rubio. Can't wait to be able to make more tumblers. There you go. Does Billy ever get upset with Pop when he sends him on his way? Heck no. If y'all only knew my dad, my dad's got thick skin, but my dad is a heckler. My dad, my dad is Eddie Haskell. If you know who Eddie Haskell is, my dad is Eddie Haskell. And... Pop just gives Billy a ta you know uh, a taste of his own medicine, but you know what's so funny? <clears throat> Pop's humor, my dad's humor, my humor. The funniest person that was in our family was Kurt, uh, my dad's brother who passed away a few years ago uh, from cancer. Uh, Kurt was the funniest person. Dark humor. I mean, dark offensive humor that I like. May, I laugh at that stuff. It's funny. Kurt was the funniest. And he would rag on Billy, on my dad, Billy, pop. He would leave Nan alone because Nan would whip his ass. But he, uh, and, and he knows not to mess with the uh, alpha female, alpha omega female of the family. She bites. 
so Kurt was absolutely hilarious. Kurt was like, a, he was like an older brother to me. You know, if there were things that were going on in my life that I really couldn't share with my parents or Nan and Pop, I would call my Uncle Kurt. He would shoot me straight and, uh, you know, kind of shoot some humor at me not to make me feel so bad. Uh, the house that uh, is across from Nan and Pop, I used to live in that house. Uh, but now Kurt's daughter, Andrea, uh, she lives she lives there now. That, that's her house. Uh, and she's going to college. So we, we watch her closely. So she's living across from Nan and Pop, making sure that, you know, that they're taken care of, too. But um, she's going to college at University of Texas at Tyler. I think she's doing online classes. So she's, uh, she's, uh, she's living there, taking care of the house. Is Pop, is Connor the only person Pop does not get on to? Nan won't let Pop. She won't let Billy. She won't let me. She won't let any of us get on to Connor. I know how I was raised growing up. Uh, I, there were some times where the, the rod was definitely not spoiled, the, you know, so, uh, sp or, I'm, I'm sorry, spared. There was, there were times that the rod was definitely not spared and, uh, I was definitely not spoiled. So the rod was used many, many times, whatever you call a rod, a ruler, flies water, a sandal, maybe an old belt. I don't remember. Those are the good old days. You know, those are the good old days. I, I, I will always look back and go, man, I remember that spanking that I got with a meter stick. With a meter stick. All because Nan put me in a bedroom one time. And I, I think I was in, golly, it's weird how you can remember these things so vividly. Uh, third or fourth grade, she she put me in one of the spare bedrooms at her house. And she said, you have got to learn these math problems and I can't stand math. Math might as well be Russian to me. I was terrible at math. My God. Now, could I go back and probably attempt to do it now? Probably. They didn't have all these online classes and, you know, the iPhones and all that crap. You know, our teachers used to say, you'll never have a, uh, you'll, your teacher, you always just say, you'll never have a uh, calculator with you at all times. Now look at us. But anyways, my grandmother put me in a room and she would always set a timer. And she said, she would always say, when that timer goes off, I'm going to come in here and go over the math problems. Well, uh, the room that I would go in was my dad's room. And he always had all these sports things and the old uh, um, toys and stuff. Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Million Dollar Man, like a treasure trove of like 60s and 70s toy memorabilia and yearbooks and all this kind of stuff uh, and games. So I heard that timer go off. I looked down at my math. I looked down at my paper. I didn't do a single damn problem. So I went and locked the door. I went and locked the door, and here she comes. I, I hear her her little feet in her socks, you know, moving across the uh, the uh, the floor. And she starts jiggling that door handle. And I knew my ass was going to get tore up. So she's like, Jason, open that door. I said, uh, I'm sitting here going, 2 plus 2, 7, you know, 10 plus 10, 24. I'm filling out all this stuff wrong. I'm filling it out, you know, 5 plus 7. 18, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do as best as I can. <sighs> she had one of those keys that you could stick in a little hole, pop it and open it up. Man, when she popped and opened that door, man, I remember seeing that meter stick. And it's one of those meter sticks you can get from the paint stores. We all remember those. They were harder than a rock, but just flimsy enough to where she could catch each cheek. And I remember she, she tore my ass up. She tore me up. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun while I was getting a whip, and I remember. But now that I look back, I'm like, man, that was so funny. It was so funny because now she won't let anyone discipline Connor when Connor is at her house. You know, she, I, she, she's always like, put him in timeout. She's like, never put a finger on the baby. Always put him in timeout. So I've kind of... uh grown accustomed to just putting him in time. My, my kid's a good kid. He's very respectful. He he never gives me any problem. But the one time he does, I'm like, Connor, get over here. Go get in timeout. Because I know that if you get a spanking from daddy, you're going to tell Nan and Nan's going to be all over me. And then Pop's going to laugh. And then she's going to be mad at Pop. Then my dad's going to wonder why Connor doesn't get a spanking. Then she's going to be at, she's going to be mad at my dad. Nan rules the world. Nan rules the world. 
mic drop, that's it. She rules the world. So when it comes to Connor, her baby, uh, that she's kind of adopted as a little cub in her life since Kurt's passing, Connor can do no wrong. But I'm sure that's all grandbabies with their their grandparents. Where does Pop keep all of his hats? Pop has about 5,000 hats uh, since the very beginning. He has about 5,000 hats. I buy these big Walmart tubs, and they probably have 150 hats, 200 hats in each tub. And I got a storage shed that's 12 feet wide by 24 feet long. And there's 12 of those big, I can lay in the container. I can lay in the container. And you can close it up. I mean, it's that big. And I'm 6'3", 250, 260. I can fit in there. And I got about 12 of those in this big storage unit. You know, I told myself after I got done with the water, I would be done. But I haven't even started. This was supposed to be my uh, um, my clock. So when I got done with this, I was going to be done with the video. But I forgot about the water. But here we are. Uh you know, what, what we do with some of the hats, what do you do with all of the hats? Uh, well, we keep some of them, and then we also take some to the, uh, we take some to the local shelters, uh, local homeless shelters, the Highway 80 rescue missions, the, uh, the uh, Salvation Armies, and, and we give a lot to the, you know, less fortunate that are there, and they really enjoy those around the holidays. You'd be surprised, you know, people that don't have a home that are living in these, Homeless shelters that are taken good care of by, you know, donations. You know, we'll, we'll giving just a hat, a hat to someone who has nothing. They think that's the greatest thing in the world. And, you know, I, I always say that I can, you know, get through anything, but you don't know how hard it is to stand in front of people who don't have much and then give them something that's, the entire world and, and, and watch them, you know, just break down. It's tough. It's hard. Um, I try to limit the amount of time that, that I'm in those situations because I mean, it, it, it just, it just, it, it breaks your heart. You know, it, it does. I'm the same way with animals too, man. I can't go to animal shelters and see, you know, dogs that are taken in that were abused and stuff like that. I just can't do that. You know, it, 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 it makes me angry. Um, but you know, helping out people, you know, it, it's sometimes you wonder how, how did, how did life get so bad? Or, you know, maybe they don't have any family, but you know, giving back to them, just the smallest little thing, uh, just a hat, a pair of socks, you know, a package of underwear boxers. They, you know, they, they, they give you the biggest hug and you know, they'll squeeze the life out of you. But you know, th there's people that I see around town that, that are, that, you know, that are homeless and, and I see them wearing the hats that Pop and I will deliver to them. And man, it's just, it's just tough because they hold on to it. You know, that, that's, that's, that's their world. That, that is, that is, that, uh, another man's trash is someone else's treasure. And, and I'm not saying that, that, that stuff is trash to us, but you know, we're given to them because they need it. And to see them wearing it, Every day, a year later, two years later, three years later, man, it's, uh, that stuff's hard to deal with. You know, I, I, I give all the respect to people who, who work in those situations, helping, uh, people like that. Cause they got a heart of gold. It, it takes a special person to do that. You know, kind of like nurses and teachers. I put them in that same category. It, it takes a special person to do what they do. I don't always agree. You don't always have to agree. But you gotta respect. You gotta respect what they do. Let's see here. What else do we got to talk about? I kinda went all over the place today. It's kinda like I just started throwing darts. So I actually had an agenda and it was like talking point one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to like twenty nine. I went from like one to eight to fifteen back up to two. So I appreciate y'all staying with me. Well, we got about three thousand people still watching. Thank y'all. Let's go, uh, let's read some uh, comments. How far do you live from Papa Nan? Just a few miles. Just a few miles down the road.
Yes. Uh, yes, everybody should have a lot of respect for Nan. I have a lot of respect for Nan. Everybody, I think, that has ever come across her has high respect for her. Nan, you know, I wish I... And I might do it. I might I might do a tell-all book one day about Nana Pop. Separate book. You know, kind of like the greatest generation to me. Doesn't have to be to everybody else, but to me. I wouldn't mind writing a book. Because I think people ought to know their story other than just what you know from Pop Watch. You know, think about Nan. <sighs> to think that she's at where she is today and what she's gone through from a little girl. You know, seven, eight, nine years old having to walk to school, uh, you know, in, you know, mountainous terrain, no socks, no shoes, you know, basically you're, you're like in cinder block schools back then. And if it rained, you ain't going because the likelihood of the roof leaking was going to be really, really good. You know, Nan grew up and I have cousins probably watching this and they know, they know, um, they know what Nan has gone through because their aunt, or their uncle, who's one of Nan's brothers and sisters, went through the same thing. But Nan grew up, you know, she grew up extremely poor. You know, I've seen pictures of their house, dirt floors. You had an oven, you know, uh, a, uh, a uh, I guess a kindling or log oven that you would uh, cook on. And it was a one or two bedroom house, dirt floors. And you might have had like wood pallets or crates with like blankets thrown on top. But, you know, she's one of like, what, seven, eight, nine kids. So... Um, the conditions she grew up in Puerto Rico in the thirties and forties were, were not good. Were not good, but that her family tried to provide as best as they can. I mean, you can only do, you know, you can't pick your, you can't pick your family or what they do or what they've done in their life prior to you existing. So Nan and Nan's, uh, mother and father, they, you know, they loved all their children, but you know, just back then they just didn't, they didn't have a lot of money, you know, and, and, and that story could be said about people here in the United States, but I can only tell uh, what I've been told and the pictures that I've seen, you know, Nan's father going into the sugar cane fields at 435 o'clock in the morning and not coming back till like seven, eight, nine at night and going to bed for a little bit of time that he hadn't getting back up. And we're talking about getting paid cents, cents in a week, you know, five, 10 cents a week. I don't even know. Was that a lot back then in the 30s and 40s? I don't know. That doesn't seem like a lot now. I mean, you can almost find that at the car wash when you get out. But Nan grew up in a very difficult period in Puerto Rico. There, there was a lot of unrest going on politically there when she was little. And, you know, the statehood when Puerto Rico became a state and all that. I think that it might have became, I don't know when Puerto Rico, not a state, a territory. I don't know when it became a United States territory. But it was probably, it was definitely before she was born. But uh, the stories that she used to tell me about, you know, there were times that they wouldn't go to school for a few months, like during hurricane season, you ain't going to school. So you stay at home, you go, you go uh, work to clean people's houses, you got to go help, you know, your brothers slaughter the, the livestock, you got to go get the chicken eggs. I mean, you hand, you hand a, uh, you know, kids today, kids today are not equipped for that. They're not. I don't think my generation was really equipped for it. My dad's generation, probably so, because they grew up during some hard times in the 50s and 60s. But our, my generation, the generation that we're raising, they don't have a clue. The only thing that I know is what my grandparents tell me. And, you know, you got to respect that. You got to respect that. There, You know, I can live, I, I know that I can live the rest of my life. I know that I can live the rest of my life, even if I was 180. 90, 100 years old, 110, I know that I can live to that age and I will never in my life do anything as hard as what my grandfather and what my grandmother have gone through. It's a fact. It's a fact for almost all of us. Now, I'm not saying that we don't have our own hardships. We do. But to grow up in that generation back in the 20s and 30s, you know, dog eat dog world, dog eat dog world. Uh, yes, my dad only had one brother, David Kurtroy. Yes, he passed away in 2019, August. Well, funeral was August 12th, uh, 2019. He passed away August 12th, 2019, yeah. Um, you know, what's weird is I don't think I've ever explained this to anyone. How did Pop Watch get started? 
Um, I, I, I do road sales for a sporting good company, Tyler Athletics out of Tyler, Texas. So uh, I used to live in Tyler. I, I'm, I'm from Longview originally. Went to Spring Hill High School, graduated, went to Kilgore College, home of the Kilgore College Rangerettes. Uh, then when I went to TJC, Tyler Junior College. I moved to Tyler from Kilgore, uh, Texas. I uh, moved to Tyler, and I lived there for 10, 12 years, and then I decided to move back. Uh, when I moved back, uh, Pop would always, you know, sit on the front porch. I hear my cat over there scratching at the door. Pop would always sit on the front porch while I would go to work, and, you know, I would always visit him at the end of the day, and Pop's like, well, where are we going? How come you didn't take me? And I just kind of noticed something with Pop that, you know, it almost looked like his, his life was just wasting away, just him sitting on that front porch swing every day. You know, I can't imagine for the 10, 12 years I was gone, how much social fun he missed out on because I wasn't there. Pop and I, Pop's been like my best friend my entire life. Um, I grew up next door, so whenever whenever I needed to seek refuge, uh or if I wanted to just hang out once with someone other than my friends, I'd always go sit on the back porch with Pop. He would always hand me that pipe, and I would always go in and pack that pipe with red velvet tobacco and bring him a Schaefer beer, pop it open for him. Those were the coolest things. Packing that pipe, though, that was one of the coolest things. I, I, I thought I was like Pablo Escobar packing his pipe with red velvet. I didn't know who Pablo Escobar was back then. But I'm just saying, I mean, that that's how cool it was to me. I'm like, man... If my mom and dad only knew, I'm going to get in trouble. If Nan only knew, Pop was going to get in trouble. But, you know, I I, I always told Pop, I'm like, well, and, and Nan was working at the time. She was teaching at Kilgore College, Longview Center. She was teaching ESL, English as a Second Language. So my grandmother would be at work, and Pop would just sit there uh, at the house all day, just wasting away on the swing. People are like, yeah, we drove by, we, we stopped by and said hi to Pop, we waved at him, and, you know, Pop's like a staple in Spring Hill. You know, he he is monumental when it comes to Longview and Spring Hill. You know, people say, Matthew McConaughey, Forrest Whitaker, all these famous people from Longview. Shit, Pop's more popular than all of them. Come on, give him some credit. You know, People always say, yeah, I remember driving back by Pop's house in the 70s and 80s and 90s. He's always out there on the front porch waving, going, hey, dude, all that kind of stuff. So back to my story. Let's circle back. Um, I started taking Pop with me on these road trips, going to schools. And, you know, Pop always was hilarious. He always had quick-witted humor. Nothing that was ever out of line or really what I would call offensive was just quick-witted. And I love setting him up in situations because I knew how he would act. And I would, you know, kind of like when I say, man, I am, I am tired. My back is killing me. And he'd go, from what? Jason, you ain't done. Shit. He's been saying that my whole life. So I would always, I would always put him in a situation to where I know how, what he would say. Uh, because I would just, I would, I, I just knew that's who he wanted to be. I knew he was best when he was cracking jokes, you know, when, when he was laying into somebody. Uh, my dad, oh man, sometimes I'll sit there with Pop and I'll go, yeah, well, you know, dad said he was going to come over and weed eat your yard. He goes, man, you're, you're daddy with my weed eater. Your dad ain't going to weed eat nothing. If he does, he's going to come over and get my weed eater and take it to you. That's the kind of, that's where, that's, that's where Pop wants to be. That's where Pop is at his best. He's thinking on top of his feet, on top of his toes and he's just cracking. You know, his mind's just so overly active. That That's what I love. But, you know, Pop would just ride around with me to these schools. And we'd go from school to school to school. Tyler, Longview, you know, wherever we would go. And I said, you know what? Pop says some funny things. I would like to get this on camera. Because all my friends love Pop. They're like, man, he, your Pop used to say this, used to say that. Man, your Pop used to yell at me when I was riding my bike down the road, tell me, get my ass back in the house, street lights coming on, all that kind of stuff. So I started filming our, uh, you know, our day-to-day -day road trips. And one of my friends said, you know, why don't you start a Pop Watch Facebook page? Or, I'm sorry, why don't you start a Facebook page uh, geared towards Pop? And I said, okay, well... I guess that makes sense. I, what do you want me to do? And they're like, well, you can, you know, since you have Facebook already, you can just kind of, you know, branch off yours and start a page geared towards Pop. So I was like, well, I got to think of a, a name. I got to think of a name for it. So at first it was just Pop. We had like 
15, 20, 30 or 40 followers or something like that. Just my usual friends would, you know, laugh and, you know, hee haw about the stuff that he would say. And then one day, Connor, my son, he said, he said, he said, Pop, watch, watch, Pop. And Pop wasn't paying attention. He goes, Pop, watch. And he goes, What do you want? That's what I meant. Pop Watch. That's the name. That is the name that we're going with. So I guess I can give Connor credit for that. Uh, I'll let him know down the road. I'll let him know down the road, probably during his uh, wedding. Hey, Connor, you remember I got to uh, I got to give you all the uh, credit for coming up with that name. So I started filming <clears throat> all of our trips together, and then I would just you know go in and edit the videos to make sure that. You know, he didn't say anything that would butt hurt too many people. And then I would just kind of string him along in a video and I'd upload it and all that kind of stuff. Well, we had, we got up to like two or 300 followers. I was like, man, I am Matthew McConaughey. 300 followers. This is the greatest thing in the world. 2017, 2017. I'm Matthew McConaughey, 300 followers. This is cool. I'm on top of the world. And it was about that time that Shark Week was coming on. This was around July, August, Shark Week. So... I went to bed one night, and I don't remember what video it could have been, but I woke up at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and my phone was, you know, hot to the touch. I was like, man, what's going on? Battery's heating up? And I had like 40,000 notifications on my phone, and Pop, Pop Watch, our Facebook page, went from like 300 followers to like 30,000 in... The time I went to bed, which was, uh, if I remember, you know, Connor was sleeping with me. So it was probably 10 o'clock to about three, four, five o'clock in the morning. 30,000 followers. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what was going on. I was like, man, did I get hacked? Where did all these people come from? At that time, I didn't know how the universe of Facebook worked. So I gradually started you know, posting more videos and I would see what people would like, what people would not like, what they would gravitate to. And I kind of found the niche of what people liked. So I would just, you know, film pop and his element and I would just upload it and know this. There's no script to pop watch. I can't get pop to remember what he ate today. So I got pop tacos today from Papacitas, which is his favorite Mexican food restaurant. If I was to go back over there tonight and say, Pop, what'd you eat? He'll say, I know we went somewhere, but I don't know where we ate. So no, there's no script for Pop. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, pages out there that work on scripts. We don't work on scripts. I mean, like I said, Pop sometimes can't remember. And he's got a great long-term memory. I mean, his long-term memory is better than mine, but short-term memory, he has, he has a little, little, little problem with that, uh, which a lot of us do, so... But yeah, I went from like 30,000 followers. You had Ludacris. You had 50 Cent. Um, you had like uh, Willie Nelson sharing it. You had Inside Edition. You had all these people um, uh, sharing our page. And I'm like, what originally got it to take off? And I think it was like Street Outlaws on Discovery or History Channel. I don't know which one what organization they're affiliated with, whether it's Discovery or, or History, but one of their guys who mans one of their pages shared a pop video, and allegedly that's how we took off. I can't say that for certain because there are celebrities that sell that share our pages all the time. I'll never know till you tell me. I don't know. It's not like, you know, um, it's not like Matthew McConaughey can share my page and it'll say, hey, Matthew McConaughey shared your page. I don't know. I won't know till... Somebody randomly tells me, it's like Instagram. I looked at a video that someone used of ours the other day. It had like 3 million views in 24 hours. I wouldn't have known until a fan told me about it. So I went on that page and I was like, oh, that's cool. And sometimes these pages will send me messages like uh, uh, LA Bible or, you know, some of these big time uh, pages that have massive followers uh, that have, you know, 10, 15, 20 million followers, they'll send me a message and say, hey, do, you have, do we have permission to, to uh, post this? I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, case in point, ridiculous, ridiculousness, ridiculous, ridiculous. Anyways, that show on, what is it, MTV VH1? I don't even remember what it is. 
Uh, but they wanted to do a special on Pop with some skit that he was doing or one of the videos. They're like, can we use it? You know, we'll, uh, we'll pay you uh, $200 or whatever to use the video. I'm like, just use the video. I, you don't have to pay me nothing. Just use the video. Cause I didn't want to get into all that legal stuff. I was like, as long as you know, you know, and I'm, I'm not taking money for someone else to, to, to play my content. No, because then they kind of got you by the, you know what? But I said, no, just take it, run with it. You have my permission. You have it here in writing. Just go ahead and run with it and use it. So they'll be, they'll be airing it on ridiculousness some, at some point. They're going to let me know, uh, allegedly. Who knows? Uh, but there's a lot of other pages that, that take our content and they'll ask us permission to, uh, to share it. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. But, you know, when you start asking, when, when they, when you start getting, these people saying, well, we'll pay you for it. I'm like, mm, no, I understand. No one likes turning down money, but I'm not going to take money from someone who's as big as these MTV and VH1 pages that are, you know, going to take my content and say, now we, we own the rights to it. So I'm just like, yeah, just take it for free. You know, you, there was no exchange, no monetary exchange or anything like that. So you can run with it because you got my permission. And I, I'll, I'll leave a lot of stuff, you know, like that. So, comments, comments. Watching from a small town in Oregon. How's Pop doing? Pop is doing great. Is this my full-time job? No. Work for a sporty good company. And I'm a full-time daddy. Full-time daddy is a more important job. Does Billy get his feelings hurt? Not at all. He actually laughs about it. No, Pop's not. No, he's not. He's not serious when he's talking to me. He, he's just, it's just humor. Just humor. Humor goes a long way. You know, we put out, we put it out. You determine what it is for yourself. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. Some people think it's too harsh. But yeah, we're not here to tell you what to think of our humor, our comedy. You have to decide that for yourself. Nicole Page Pelton, you guys are one of a kind. Thank you. Jason V. Segrist, you're a good man, Jason. Thank you. You know, I, I'm just glad that 3.4 thousand of y'all are uh, still hanging in there. I figured that uh, y'all would have gotten uh, bored by now. I mean, what? how long have I been on here? Golly, almost an hour and a half. Yes, Connor ate dinner tonight. After his math tutoring, uh, I picked him up some Mickey D's. I, I knew I wouldn't cook in the night. I had to do this video, so I picked up Connor some uh, McDonald's. Yes, I only have one sister, Reagan Roy Young. She is uh, she is a reporter at CBS 19 uh, in Tyler, Texas. Do, do you get noticed everywhere you go? Does it get annoying sometimes? Um, you know, the funniest thing, Pop gets noticed everywhere. I'm convinced that you could drop Pop anywhere in the continental United States where there is a room with 10 people or more. I'm willing to bet two or three of those people know who he is. That They just will. Um, uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy going We'll, we'll be at a, in a parking lot somewhere and Pop will be sitting in the passenger seat. Somebody will walk and you can see him 20 or 30 feet away. They will walk and they just something about the look in the car from a distance. They'll see the plaid and the hat and, and an older man. And they're like, is, is that Pop? And, and they'll sit there and like, you know, just talk to their friends or their wife or their kids. They're like, man, I think that's, that's that old man from Facebook. And they'll come over there and, and say hi to him and stuff like that. But Pop is recognized. I'm, I'm convinced he's recognized internationally everywhere. I, he doesn't understand how big he is. Uh, his world is just in front of him. You know, he doesn't know how to work cell phones. He doesn't know how to work computers. Uh, I have to help him with his remote control at home. The, the, uh, 
satellite TV remote control. I got to use whiteout and I got to put it on the buttons that he can touch. I'm like, only push this button for on and off. Only push this button for volume. Only push this bu uh, button for the channels up and down. Boy, he'll start clicking on that thing. And I mean, it will just go into like a rabbit hole. And I'll, I'll, I almost end up having to just say, dude, we just got to buy a new TV. It's not worth it. Uh, but everybody knows Pop. Everybody knows Nan. I mean, she, she's, she has a very recognizable look and face and her little hat and Pop, you know, with the plaid and the hat. And, you know, with me, not too many people recognize me at all. It's my voice. And to me, I think that I got a voice like everybody else here in East Texas. I mean, the way I sound is the way that my friends sound to me. So I'll be at Walmart and Connor will be with me. I'm like, Connor, what do you want to eat? You know, I'm picking like some Eggos or something. Connor, what, what do you want to eat? And somebody on the aisle over will come around. They're like, hey, I just got to ask, are you... Are you the guy from Pop Watch? I'm like, ah, I am. You know, how do you do all this kind of stuff? And they're like, oh, I just heard your voice. I'm like, that is crazy. But, you know, that's locally. That happens to me everywhere I go, whether it's locally or if I'm in Dallas or Austin or Houston. Um, I was staying at the Gaylord uh, in Dallas, Texas, Frisco, Plano, Dallas, Texas, you know, one of those cities, the, the Gaylord, where the Dallas Cowboys stay. And I'm out there unloading my truck my mom and connor are already in checking in for the room and the um like the bellhop comes up to me and he says uh sir would you like me to take your bags i said ah uh, yeah i'll probably take them in there i said it's no big deal i said there's other people around me that that probably need help i only got a couple of bags and these folks recognized my voice they were from virginia and they were there uh for a family event in Dallas. And they said, hey, they said, one in a million shot is your name Jason. I said, yeah. And they're like, oh my God, they high five and all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, uh, we recognized your voice when you were talking to that guy. And I was like, you're kidding. Where y'all from? Virginia. We just got here today. I'm like, small world. Uh, I, I, I don't have a very recognizable uh, face, I don't think. Voice, I guess. Uh, like I said, I think I sound like everybody else that's here in East Texas. Am I bilingual? C. I don't speak any other languages besides English and poquito español. Un poquito. Let's see. Pop loves the females. Cracks me up. Oh, man. Pop's head's always on a swivel. Jason, can I ask what happened to your wife? I've never been married. Never been married. Never been engaged. Been single for, golly, isn't it bad that you got to think about it? Five, six years, something like that? All on my own choice. All on my own choice. David Solomon, love meeting you at Panther Pizza. David, uh, were you from St. Louis, Missouri? Were you the one who gave Pop the St. Louis hats? You, I met you up there at the pizza parlor and you gave me the St. Louis hats. You were in the Jeep Gladiator. I think you drove, right? Seeing if he responds to that. Maybe or maybe not. Uh, let's see. My best friend Zach Elder is sending me a message on Facebook Messenger. I'm not going to read that. Zach, you need to be taking care of your girlfriend. Monica, cook for Monica. Zach, if I see another message pop up, uh, then I'm going to be really scared to read it. Working EMS in Jackson County, Texas on a 48-hour shift. Love watching your videos. Thank you. You need to find a nice lady. I try. I try. I try. Hey, uh, speaking of, did don't tell me the Houston Astros beat the Boston Red Sox. Anybody got an update on that score? Did 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 Boston get beat? 
Did they get beat? I've been talking so much smack about the Astros, my friends are going to lay into me. Yes, Patrick Mahomes from White House, Texas. So did the Astros beat the Boston Red Sox? Because I'm scared to death that once I get off this live feed, my friend. They were winning 7-1, but I didn't see the final. Come on, Jessica. I need the final. Your job is to sell stuff to different colleges. Yes, Adidas rep. So if they're wearing Nike or Under Armour, i got to go in there and convince them to wear Adidas. But right now, Adidas doesn't have anything. Uh, Astros World Series champs. Come on, Mike. Mike, come on, Mike. I need Boston to win. I need Boston to win this series. I can't stand the Houston Astros. We need an update on the rag dolls, please. Brooke, rake strong. They're fine. They're fine. Fat and happy. The rag doll cats are fat and happy. Do, do a lot of fans show up at Pop's house? You know, with the pandemic and stuff going on, uh, re respectfully, fans have kind of stayed away. But as things are kind of getting back to normal, uh, they show up. But they're always social distancing. They got their mask and all that stuff. But on an average, you probably get almost 50 to 100 people a week. They'll stop by. Most of the time, Pop's not there. He's with me. Uh, they'll leave stuff at the uh, at their door. Am I going to have Pop Watch hoodies this fall? Yes. Uh, we're currently designing uh, the new Pop Watch store, so we'll have new merchandise coming out soon. Then we'll pick a non, uh, we'll, we'll pick a, uh, a a charity organization to donate all the uh, funds to. Atlanta Braves all the way. I like the Atlanta Braves. My husband and cousin plays for the Boston Red Sox. Where you live? See, I'm a Texas Rangers fan. How do you think I feel? Texas Rangers are terrible. What happened to Astro World in Houston? Is Astro World still a thing? I don't know. Is it? Did they tear it down? You have an original pop watch shirt. I'd like to see what that looks like. I wonder. I can't even remember what the original ones look like. That's so nice of you thinking of others. You know, that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. We're just happy to be alive today. That's enough for us. We got to help other people out where we can. Do I raise my son? Yes, I do. Astro World has been closed for many years. Okay. If the sound is delayed, it's probably an internet connection. Or sometimes the it could be my internet connection. It might stutter a little bit. Why don't I like the Astros? Because I'm a Rangers fan. I don't like anything about Houston sports. But I will jump... I will uh, frog jump over uh, Houston, and I'll take the San Antonio Spurs in basketball. I don't like, you know, I like, you know, I like Earl Campbell. Of course, you know, that's back when I was little. Uh, I'm, I, I might would have enjoyed the Houston Oilers if they were still the Oilers, but now they're the Texans. No thanks. Astros, no thanks. Houston Rockets, no thanks. I do like University of Houston, the Cougars football team. U of H. These comments are going way too fast. I wish I could just slow them down. Does Billy really ever leave the money on the table? Yes, he actually does. Uh, he leaves 10 20 sometimes $50 for Nan to buy groceries.
Connor Cleveland Miles Garrett. He does not have a Miles Garrett jersey for the Cleveland Browns. Hello from Ireland. Luck of the Irish. Who is Noah McCoy? He's been talked about in the show. He's a country music singer. Big country music singer. Yes, I can scroll comments when uh, it's live, but I'm scared to touch the screen. But also, the comments are going so fast that even if I see 